Hi guys, I'm Kaylee from Love Learning Every Day and I have another homeschool update for you. So if you are new to my homeschool updates, just keep in mind they are very, very informal. So I just pretty much film it in one go and then upload it straight to YouTube. And that's just so you get my real unedited thoughts and so I can get my ideas out quicker to you guys and you kind of see what's happening in our homeschool as it's happening. If you are completely new to uh, this channel, um, I am a secular homeschool mom to two young kids. I have a six-year-old son that is mostly working on second to third grade-ish work. And then I have a three-year-old daughter that's working mostly on kindergarten type work. So yeah, let's get into it. So um, first, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of updates on our homeschool. And then, um, then we'll go through kind of together school stuff. I did write down notes. So um, if I'm looking down, that is why. Um, yeah, then we're going to be talking about like read alouds together school, stuff like that. And then uh, I'll be going specifically into my daughter's school. So kindergarten type work and then uh, my son's, which is like second, second, third ish grade work. So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> um, so first of all, this whole week we are taking off because we have family visiting. So um, that is really nice and special. Um, and I think the kids have, <laughs> I think they're enjoying it because I feel like we've been, ever since we've gotten back, we've been like really doing it pretty hard and being really consistent. And although I think that is important, I think um, they've been doing really productive, awesome things on their break. So I, I've been I think it's been good. Um, and it's let us do a lot of decluttering around the house. I have a uh, homeschool declutter, like homeschool room declutter video um, that I'm gonna put up soon, hopefully if I can edit it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's been nice. We've been able to get done with projects and yeah. Um, okay. And we added in new subjects. So um, if you've been uh, with that, like, we've always kind of struggled. We've always done the basics, I think, really well. Um, you know, we, we always do read alouds. We always do silent reading. We always do language arts, you know, for the level. And then we always do math. Um, and language arts and math, I feel like we really hit hard. But I think some of the other subjects can sometimes get away from us. Um, and I think um, since we last talked, at least, we've been really putting in an effort to doing those more frequently. And it's been working really well. So those subjects, sorry, um, those subjects are like handwriting, penmanship, and art, uh, science, Spanish, and creative writing. I'll get into more of those um, in just a little bit. But yeah, so let's start out by first talking about our read aloud. So we finished Matilda. Um, and this might be my favorite roll doll. So again, um, I mentioned this in the last one. Um, Adults are just really terrible in this. Um, there's definitely name calling. There's definitely um, just overall really problematic behavior. Um, but I do think it's it's a lot better. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's just a lot better than uh, most role dolls have been for us. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised reading this. I didn't know this story very well at all. Um, and there are some like, reveals that are really fun and I was surprised and it's definitely I think the longest roll doll we've ever read as well so I was very happy with this we also got to read uh watch the movie and it's on our scratch off list so this was a big success definitely our favorite roll doll so far um let's see and now we are doing Flora and Ulysses by Kate uh De Camillo. I never know how to say her name. I need to look that up next time. Um, but we have previously read uh, The Tale of Despero from this author. Um, and this is, we're about halfway done currently. Uh, but we are really loving this. So this deals with a girl that really loves comics. And she kind of finds this squirrel that uh, some event happens to him. And now it appears that he has some superpowers and just what happens. Her parents are recently divorced and I think it just, so far it's just really, really good. Um, one thing about Kate D. Camillo, <laughs> again, I need to look it up. Uh, she does a really good job weaving in really like fabulous vocabulary into your stories. So if you're looking for something like that, 
I would imagine all of her works do that, but uh, so far the ones that we've read, Tale of Despero and Flora and Ulysses have definitely done that. I read Because of Winn-Dixie when I was a kid, but I've not read it to them yet. So, and I don't remember, I remember in general the story, but not enough to give you commentary on it or anything. Um, but we are really liking this. A uh, Disney Plus movie just came out and that's why we picked it. So yeah, yeah, super fun. Um, let's see. Okay, so read alouds. Uh, then let's talk a little bit about our morning basket. So I think I've shared this before with you guys, um, but right now we're trying to make more of an effort. Sometimes with morning basket, I just end up skipping it because it's kind of like the extra things, you know? Um, but I do think those like, you know, little five minutes here, five minutes here really make the biggest difference in our homeschool as far as like memorization, logic work, geography, um, songs, you know, to help with memorization. Um, yeah, all that type of stuff, math stuff, like really helps <laughs> a lot, um, with everything else. So I'm trying to make a bigger effort to make sure we always do it. And I'm trying to make sure we do every aspect because sometimes if I do it, I'll, I'll just do the real basic, like our, our, uh, the lines that we've memorized off. And it's like the same three ones or same four or five or whatever, um, that we've done for a long time. So I'm not sure how much that's adding to it, but I've tried to do a bigger effort these past couple weeks. And anyway, so now we're doing uh, Mindo, which is a logic game and it is so much fun. So my daughter is um, working her way through the green section, which is a little bit littler. And then my son is working his way through yellow. But in general, let me show you, let me show you this part so you can see. So there's different little tiles and both sides, they're different. Um, and you have to fill in the puzzle. Sometimes they give you some clues. Sometimes it's um, completely uh, empty and then you just have to put it together to match the colors and I really really like it it's one that we can both do so one of them does that um, while the other one does their abacus work and I did remember to bring it this time so because I know I told you guys last time that we do this and it's probably one of the best math things that we do like I think when we get to multiplication or even just number sense like just any sort of number sense type of thing this has been a big asset. So my daughter, I just make her count to 20. So she has to go one, two, three, you know, all the way to 20. And then she has to do tens. So 10, 20, all the way to 100. And then, um, and then I think I'm going to start giving her more because just seeing her brother do it, she does a lot more. And then um, uh, my son does, you know, fives to 100. And again, that really helps visualizing it so you can see exactly how it is and you know the patterns within that and then he does 2 to 20 and then he normally picks like a fun one and does it either to 100 or 2 it gets to like a a 10 like he would do 3s to 30 type of thing um and yeah I just think it has helped so much um and I really like it the abacus is hands down my favorite math mani manipulative by far it's just so nice that it's just contained like so many math, math manipulatives get so busy and there's so many pieces to play with. But this, it's like, you know, you put it all out and then worst case scenario, now it's better, you know? Um, so I really, really like that. But in any case, so that's part of our morning basket. Um, and I am planning on showing you guys our morning basket and our logic uh, soon. Here, I'm just going to put this down here. Um, but yeah, I just haven't had time yet. Um, okay, so we do, we do that. Um, and I'll talk about penmanship. I've shown this to you guys before because we did it pretty consistently for a while. This is the Draw Right Now series. Um, sorry. Um, this is my favorite way to do handwriting. I made this into a book and people have asked before if I could share it. And honestly, I'm just not sure <laughs> because, uh, I would imagine this is somewhat copyrighted information. Uh, and I can't really make sure that people have bought the book, you know, so, um, but yeah, so this is the last one we did and he has to trace it all. So this is all done. You can see that it's all on here. Um, and then they draw and I'm not sure if we were doing it again, like the next book that we'll do, cause I have all of the books. I'm not sure we would stick with right now we're doing oil pastels and they can be kind of messy. Um, but yeah, 
it's working out really well. I need to actually physically make my daughter's book. Um, because right now I just give her loose papers and I have a collection of all of her papers that I need to fill out. But for her, I just write down um, one word. So I would write hen for this and she has to trace it. Um, but yeah. Okay, so that's one of the subjects that we do more frequently. It's all just like one a day. Um, and then science is another one, which I use this. And I'm really, really happy that I got this book um, because it just makes it so open and go. I think that's the biggest complaint with this one is that it's not open and go at all. And although I wouldn't say this is completely open and go, it is mostly. I can read it 10 minutes before and mostly find everything that I need or make it work. I'm not, you know, I'm not the type of person that gets caught up on having every single thing or anything like that. Um, same with like cooking, you know, I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is just like an adapted version, an easier, more open and go version. And I really like that. Um, and so I'm really liking this science. And then let's see, what's another thing that we do? Oh, okay. And then we do Spanish, which we're still using Whistlefritz Spanish, which again, this is definitely played to more younger uh, kids, but it works well for us. Um, and then they can watch the videos and things. I think the hardest thing for me <laughs> with Spanish, which I've been very surprised about, is that I just can't speak Spanish hardly <laughs> at all anymore. And I don't think I was ever, I was, well, I was never fluent, but I could you know, say what I wanted to say. I took some Spanish in college, you know, so, um, and then all throughout high school, I took Spanish, but it's just, and now it's like, it's all gone. Um, again, I've said this many times before, but I did learn Arabic you know, mostly. Um, it was a very like rigorous program. I did not finish because I actually got pregnant with my son. Um, but yeah, so Arabic, I know a lot better than Spanish and I feel like my brain just has like a switch like oh foreign language and not a separate like this is Arabic this is Spanish because every time I try to talk to them it just comes out Arabic and I'm like nope this is wrong this is no um and I don't know how to fix that maybe I need to do some like Duolingo but I think at this point I don't know if I'll ever get to a Spanish level that I am at Arabic like so conversationally um which again I'm not it's been, you know, however old my, old my son is since I've been there. So six, <laughs> um, since I've studied Arabic and it's not, I would definitely say my vocabulary is very down, but I definitely know how to ask the questions and that's all I'm doing right now. You know, it's like, how are you? Uh, what do you want to do today? You know, like just very, very basic things. I just want it to be immersive when we do Spanish time. And I just can't because <laughs> my brain doesn't work that way. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. And I know some people are just going to be like, well, just switch to Arabic. And um, <laughs> I just don't think so. It, it's not very practical. Um, you know, and it's very difficult because it's not teaching to read and write. Like even our Arabic teachers that were from Iraq were like their, their kids don't know it, you know, or their kids can't read it at least. And it's, I just, it doesn't seem like something worth the time investment right now, unless they're going into a very specific field. Um, so, so that's why I don't think Arabic, but I, I feel like Spanish is still helpful, but maybe not, you know, maybe I just, I just, yeah. So if you guys have advice, um, if you know multiple languages or even just like a little bit and how you like get better, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the kind of the, the roadblock we have right now with that. And then we have started uh, Jot It Down, which is a brave writer that, sorry, this is a creative writing curriculum. Um, and it is really good so far. I don't know if it's necessary though. I think you could just get, um, you know, her knowledge from podcast she has so many even probably her book uh julie bogart from brave rider has so many uh free resources and this is a little bit pricey but i've i've had it for forever so um and yeah so right now we're just going through fairy tales and rewriting them 
and then I'll type them up and then they uh, draw them. So then they're gonna have a big book of fairy tales that they have told. Um, and yeah, so it's just working on oral narration um, and then I like copy it down and stuff. So yeah, so so far it's not um, overly creative, but I think it's a really great first step. Uh, the first time my son, <laughs> son did it, he wrote like a whole page pretty much <laughs> and drew multiple pictures. So this is definitely right up his alley. He he loves anything creative. And my daughter did really well too. For three, she, she gave me two full really good paragraphs about um, Rapunzel and everything. And she did it based off of the story we read, not based off of the Disney movie, which she's seen a bunch. So I was very impressed. Um, but yeah, so oh, that is all going well. Um, and we will continue this as soon as, uh, you know, next week, <laughs> we'll get back into the swing of things. Um, and then let's see. I think that's it for together subjects. So let's talk about Audrey. So again, Audrey is learning. That's my daughter. <laughs> um, she is learning to read and she's doing amazing guys. I, I keep thinking that she's gonna like trip up or something, but nope, she just keeps, <laughs> keeps doing absolutely amazing. So she can read kind of all these beginner books. Um, and she reads, she reads from, um, our curriculum is core knowledge, language arts. They have free downloadable curriculum, their skills portion for kindergarten. I think we're in unit four. Um, but it's all about learning how to read. And even that you don't necessarily need to know, um, all the letter sounds, although my daughter already does. And most of their like other sounds as well. Um, I assume just from watching stuff, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but in any case, so that part is not slowing us down. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think it's still a great curriculum for sure, but uh, for her, it works really, really well. It just, we just use magnet tiles to move things around. Um, I'm planning on doing a video about how I've taught her to read um, soon. So, cause it's the same way I taught my son and he's definitely a fluent reader now. So um, in any case, she's, she's really doing really really amazing she can read like none of these are that hard none of them are that hard of like concepts or anything but you know just like basic things she has memorized some and and stuff um so just every time we're trying we're getting more we're going more through the book and she'll get a new one soon um but yeah so that is going awesome. I don't know at what point she's going to hit a wall. I imagine at some point, or maybe she'll just, you know, start reading chapter books at three. Who knows? But I, I assume she's going to hit a wall pretty soon. Um, and then same with math. So math is going absolutely amazing. She's in kindergarten B right now, which again, I think I mentioned this before. This is what I started with my son. Um, I did not do kindergarten A. And although I don't think kindergarten A is that necessary. I don't think it pushed my daughter really, but I think it did introduce her to concepts really well. And she's very good at like looking at a 10 frame and telling you how many are there. Um, she just can instantly do that. And I think that will benefit her uh, throughout the rest of math for Singapore math because they use a lot of like 10 frames and number bonds and things. And it is going to get harder soon. Um, she just finished um, this chapter seven and now she's going to be on chapter eight and that is number bonds so we will see how she does I think this is when it gets a little bit harder not with the math because I don't think this is you know two and three two and one one and three those aren't hard math for sure but it is a big step up from which she can definitely do those but learning how to use number bonds and stuff it is going to start getting hard um so yeah so we will see but I'm excited for her for sure um because again she's just doing awesome she always wants to do multiple lessons just she really wants to finish like whole chapters at a time and I have to tell her like no we have to go slow we have to make sure you get it like but you know she is it's hard to stop her for sure <laughs> um okay and then my son let's see he is almost done with explode the code he is let's see where is he at? Okay, so he just finished lesson seven. So he's on lesson eight of Explode the Code. And it is 
a bit different from the other ones. So let me see if I can find you some stuff. Okay, so they do breaking things into syllables here. This is my handwriting for the most part. I write for him, um, but sometimes he writes. So like this is his handwriting on top and then these are mine down below. But, um, but yeah, he does one lesson at a time with these. It's eight pages, but it's all, like I said, he's a fluent reader and this since this mostly focuses on phonics, then it's not so bad, you know? And this focuses a lot on suffixes. So this whole, um, this whole book so far has been focusing on suffixes and when to use certain words. So like here you have to put noise and noiseless in the right spot or stranger and strangeness so that they fit. And I like how that works. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really nice. Some of the things are similar, but a lot of things are different. I'm planning on once he finishes this, do a whole in-depth video of Explode the Code and like um, what each book covers and things like that, things that you should know if you can skip certain books. Um, but yeah, so we are really liking this. So once he does that, then he's pretty much done with any language arts curriculum that I have for him. So I need to order him some more <laughs> and I need to figure out what that is. I've thought about uh, Michael Clay Thompson. Everybody says that's really great for gifted learners, especially. And although he's never been tested, I imagine he is uh, gifted in some way. Um, so that is an option. If you have any experience with Michael Clay Thompson uh, products, definitely let me know. Um, I would love to know what you think of them because they are rather pricey. <laughs> um, or I've also thought about maybe like lightning, lightning literature or maybe just going back to um, core knowledge, but it's harder because that's on the computer um, and things. So I don't know, we'll have to see. We're going to have to see <laughs> uh, what I want to do. Um, it's hard because I don't really like much workbook stuff. And I know Explode the Code is very uh, workbook oriented. But I think because there was like a set end date, uh, I it feels different. You know, if if I have to get one, if it's a like, like lightning literature, you know, there's one for every grade. So it just, it's never ending. For the rest of our whole lives, it's going to be that. And so I think knowing that like as soon as he finishes this phonics books he doesn't have to do phonics ever again you know um so I don't know what I want I I think in general I'm a lot more I don't like workbooks as much but I definitely understand the appeal of something open and go something student driven as opposed to you know parent driven like it's it just gets done more often you know so I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that and how quickly I'm going to implement that in. If I'm just going to let him finish the rest of this year without it, or if I'm going to try to fill that time with something else like uh, core knowledge, you know, we're just going to have to see. But so I would love your guys' input or opinion. Um, yeah, I would just love your, love your input. And then um, as far as other work goes, he's also doing Singapore Dimensions of Math. Um, and he's in 2A. Now I will say this is very, it's still very easy. I would say there's quite a bit of problems. Like, you know, it'll just be a whole page of problems that are relatively easy still, but you know, it's still a whole page of problems. So each day he maybe has to do six, six pages of problems. Um, and that gets tiresome for sure. But um, like I said, I don't think he's really like learning any intense concepts right now. I think that's just what he is, um, like everything that he is getting from, uh, Beast Academy, he is learning first. And this is all, you know, really solidifying all of those math concepts and math ideas and ways to do things differently, um, and really get math facts down. So for what it is, I think it's really working, um, at some point. I might make him do like just evens or just odds or something like that um, just so that he doesn't have to do quite so much um, just because this is a lower level so I don't necessarily want him to do just a couple pages a day as opposed to I would I would like to finish each individual section you know each day um, because this is still lower level and he would benefit from 
maybe more difficult things. You know what I mean? But I'm not willing to skip. <laughs> so I might start letting him uh, do, you know, chunks of it instead and then just move on instead of every single problem. Um, just because he still does Beast Academy every day too. So it's not like, yeah, he does a lot of math for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And then Beast Academy is going really well. I think he, sorry, I'm sorry about that. Um, I think he just took a test, um, and is on a new, I think he's on big numbers now. Um, which is really fun, which I think is funny because one thing that he did not realize that's just like kind of a funny story um because we've always said it goes hundreds thousands millions billions you know and that's what he's always thought and you know because it mostly is but um he didn't know that there's like ten thousands and hundred thousands and ten millions and hundred millions um and so obviously that took him like oh that's weird <laughs> um amount of time to figure it out but it was just odd and funny that like you know, <laughs> I thought I was being helpful when he would ask questions about things, but no, I, I was not. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think that's it. Oh, um, yeah. So Beast Academy is going well. And then Night Zookeeper is going really well too. I, I really love it because it's something that I can do completely hands-off and Beast Academy for the most part now is hands-off as well, but it's nice that he can do that. I can just start reading, um, and he can silent read. I meant to bring up his book, but he's reading like Diary of a Minecraft Zombie or Minecraft Warrior, something like that. Um, and it's kind of a chunky book, but it's really funny and definitely a subject matter that he loves. So that's what he's reading right now. Um, but yeah, so I think that's really good. I'm going to be so excited when uh, my daughter is like fully ready to silent read with us. Like just pick up a book and just start reading. I need to get her some elephant and piggy books because she might be able to do that or they might be able to do that together. Um, but yeah, I think everything is going really, really well. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just so excited. And uh, my husband even got me a new computer. So I'm really optimistic about the amount of like videos and stuff I can start putting out um, after our family uh, leaves and stuff. So yeah. I'm super excited for the future. Um, thank you guys so, so much for watching and supporting me and being so kind. Um, and yeah, uh, like this video. If you liked this video, um, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you guys in another video.